and Judge McCormick, the one who hates Elon so much, is the one who gets to pick which judge sees which case. So there's no like she can always hear Tesla's cases if you know if Tesla were to stay in Delaware and she has a bone to pick with Elon Musk, he can never get seen by a different judge because she has the ability to make sure that he is always in her court, which is why all of his Twitter cases were in front of her, all of his Tesla cases were in front of her. And this activism is destroying the reputation of Delaware for corporate law. These are the big topics, massive big topics here. First one, of course, is, you know, should Elon be paid? He is a guy that, first of all, wasn't getting paid. He hasn't been paid for, I think, seven years at this point. And then when he did get paid, uh, finally, he got paid. Uh, you know, the judge says it's it's not available. He's been waiting for a long time. And so the article's now coming out. How much should the world's richest man get paid? Don't you just love the title? Like, why does it matter that he is the world's yeah. richest man? Why does that matter? Why, how much should Elon get paid? How much should an, a, a CEO get paid? Um Yep. Should, what should the CEO been, who has delivered the best gains to his shareholders <laughs> in all of the S&P 500, yeah, should yeah. he be compensated for delivering exceptional results? I wonder. And then who has demanded a bigger stake? Okay. He's, he's asking for 25% voting control. Um, so... Uh, Sawyer said, just posted this and he said, Elon was the lowest paid chief executive of an S&P 500 company last year. Tesla paid him zero dollars based on the article. And Elon replied saying zero for seven years, despite increasing the value of the company more than 2000 percent. That's crazy. Two thousand uh, percent. That's 20 times, 20 X. That's crazy. So yeah, thoughts on that before we get to the article. I definitely think that it is ridiculous that we're in the situation that we are in. And I think there was an article this week that came out that was just looking at how Judge McCormick has been awarding just ridiculous awards to plaintiff's lawyers in Delaware for the last several years that far exceed, you know, there's a whole bunch of these cases that get brought to federal court. And then there are, of course, cases that get brought in the Delaware Court of Chancery. And the frequency with which these ridiculous awards are being made in Delaware, specifically by Judge McCormick, and then there's another uh, judge, Judge Laster. These two judges are the vast majority of all these ridiculous awards. And it's happening far more often, I think four or five times at least uh, in for one level of award and then even more for the even higher awards than at the federal level. So this is a structural problem that's going on in Delaware. If you look at the cases, like I said, it's almost entirely these two judges and Judge McCormick, the one who hates Elon so much, is the one who gets to pick which judge sees which case. So there's no, like she can always hear Tesla's cases if, you know, if Tesla were to stay in Delaware and she has a bone to pick with Elon Musk, he can never get seen by a different judge because she has the ability to make sure that he is always in her court, which is why all of his Twitter cases were in front of her, all of his Tesla cases were in front of her. Um, and this activism is destroying the reputation of Delaware for corporate law. Uh, there was a good discussion about this on the BG2 podcast this past week as well. And I think it is incumbent upon any board member of any Fortune 500 company, if they are residing in Delaware, to understand that they are exposing themselves to excessive risk by continuing to be incorporated in the state of Delaware. And I think they're probably honestly going to be subject to litigation that if you, it is douchier, I don't know how to say the, that the right way, it's breach of fiduciary, fiduciary responsibility, duty yeah, responsibility. Yeah. to continue to expose yeah. your company to those excessive risks that don't well, The exist. potential that it can happen because it's already been shown before and then you didn't move out, they yeah. can already sue you now. Like you should have known this. Yes, exactly. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so good thing Tesla did move out. They're in Texas now, incorporated in Texas. And what we're talking about here is what should be the new uh, comp plan that's for the future. You know, this old one in 2018 is still an appeal. We'll know what's going to happen there by the end of this year. But in the meantime, should they offer him a new package? That's what might come in the shareholder meeting that's yet to be announced. The proxy could drop any day now. And then six weeks later, they will schedule a, um, uh, my prediction is it'll drop in two days from now on Thursday. 
And then six weeks later, which would be, you know, when they'll do the shareholder meeting, it, Alexandra says it could be a month away from now or longer. So let's take a look at what the options are. This is what the Wall Street Journal is saying anyways. So it's been several, it's been that way for several years where he's paid him zero dollars because of this legal battle that's been happening. Now look at this, how Tesla's business is struggling. Okay. Musk is fresh off his detour through U.S. politics and the Tesla board is exploring a new compensation package. It must answer a thorny question. How do you pay the world's richest man? Jesus, just such a beautiful article. Yep. <laughs> so they, yep. they compared it to other uh, CEOs, other founder CEOs. And this one guy, this taser maker, Axon, gave Rick Smith a $165 million stock award last year. He's, made, he's the highest paid CEO, according to Wall Street Journal. You got Zuckerberg. He got paid $75 million, 70, $27 million last year. Michael Dell got $3.1 um, Warren Buffett. I love, so it's yeah. just the bias here is on display because the only thing that they're showing you is what is the dollar amount of these awards on in almost every single one of these cases, what you're seeing is a result of, we're going to pay you a small percentage of the results that you are able to provide for the company. And so if you can provide X, you know, a growth of five times or 10 times or whatever it is, then we will give you 5% or 10% of whatever that growth is. And if they deliver the growth, then they earned whatever the thing. And if they don't deliver the growth, not only, you know, in Elon's case, if he didn't deliver, he got zero. Uh, and a lot of these, you know, maybe they just make a small amount of money, but the, if the fact they're only ever showing you the dollar amounts and they're never explaining the structures of the actual compensation, this is something that, you know, if you're an investor, you want to know, okay, how does the CEO actually earn that amount of money? And you're not being given any of that information here. So it, it just is quite yeah. frustrating. Yeah. I mean, this is standard, right? This is the way it works. People are just given a compensation package. What actually Elon had in the past was he got paid zero dollars and only will make money if milestones are hit these guys no it doesn't matter we're just giving you this amount of money now so but they're just trying to say this is like you know comparatively to what elon's amount is i think the zucks are and i would assume also the axon ceo um i'm pretty sure those are pay for performance in stock options and so they they end up being worth a lot if the stock goes up a lot of course yeah yeah well stock they give you the stock okay so option one make him show up and go big Tesla board should make it clear that Musk has to show up and do the job. Here we are again, them saying that hours is important as opposed to achievement of goals. Um, you know, yeah, the shareholders disagree with this. Of like, course, it's like achieve goals. That's what matters. Not hours of work. He needs to be there. Not ten hours. He's got to be forty hours. What? Why does that make a difference? Why should Tesla pay for that? It's making some requirements about him being involved, having some succession, and starting to run it like a real company. They have um, succession planning and we love this company because it doesn't operate on the same shitty principles as so exactly. many other fortune 500 companies. Okay. The, the sh uh, clearly motivated by the potential to reap billions of dollars in Tesla shares. Okay. There's no point in putting out millions from him. So there's no point giving him like, you know, a hundred million here, two million there. That's not. And then somehow <clears throat> look at this. You look at this. This guy says that the previous 2018 was too complicated they should be simpler the option guy was too intricate with dozens of tranches and even more discrete market and operating targets instead he says eliminate the complexity in paying for stock price performance the visa market review matches it given that tesla may no longer he wants to tie him to stock price it's like are you are you kidding me he wants it yeah like, I, you, I like do you better, want, it do you want your of ceo tied to stock price or do you want them to be tied to hitting company targets? Like, you know, you've got to get the earnings aside. You got, by the way, he is tied to stock price also, right? Stock price. But it was a whole lot more earnings. than just stock price. Yeah. The, the revenue complexity earnings, yeah. in that previous Some compensation don't. plan was part of what helped deliver the results that Tesla had, that he had to reach revenue targets and production targets and stock price targets, all of the above, that it was, you know, you can't gerrymander 
your performance and just say, oh, hey, I did really good on this one metric over here. The company as a whole is kind of in a tough spot, but you know, the stock price is up, so I get paid. That's not what you want as an investor. And yeah, I mean, the reason it's just ridiculous because 70% of the shareholders at the time voted for the compensation package because it was good for us, the shareholders. And then when it came time to revote on it, even after Elon had delivered 70% again, even though the composition of those two groups of people in 2018 versus in what was it, 2023 or 2024 that we voted on it again, whenever it was, you know, it's different, but still roughly the same total percentage. And that's because the compensation package made sense. It was very aligned with the shareholders. And anyone who wants, to, like, I want that same compensation package again. I just don't want Judge McCormick's dirty, rotten fingers exactly. anywhere near it this time. Yeah, it's it's silly. I mean, like, just stock price only, not stock price plus revenue plus earnings. <laughs> it's like... Are you, there's, you can, anybody can actually manipulate stock price, dude. And then it's like house of cards, right? That's ridiculous. You should never, ever do that. I, I don't understand this option two. pay him like a CEO. Okay. It's others argue. It isn't the board's job to satisfy Musk's demands for bigger ownership stake in the automaker. Again, he didn't it's demand also bigger not ownership stake. Elon's job to satisfy the board. Like he is a one in a million CEO, no other CEO on the planet in history has delivered what Elon Musk has delivered. Uh, this is so wrong. He, 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 we're, uh, you are a journal, you're, you're, you're a newspaper, right? You're a journalist. It's, it's, the, the, uh, the CEO, Elon, has openly discussed devoting his attention elsewhere if he can't own a quarter of Tesla. That's not what he said. He didn't say, I have to own a quarter of Tesla. He said, I need to have... Oh, uh, voting control. Voting control. This, Which was this not something that was possible under the, there. you know, Delaware didn't support the ability to have the yeah, type of dual class structure shares since it wasn't incorporated into the, the company at its founding. And so, you know, that is something that is on the table now that Tesla is no longer incorporated in Delaware. And we'll see where this uh, lands. But yeah, this is, uh, you know, definitely omissions that are glaring by anyone who actually is familiar with the situation. Okay. So this guy says, if he wants a bigger stake in company, go buy it. The board could establish a co-investment agreement arrangement under which Tesla matches some levels of share that Tom Musk acquires. Might, it might turn out this way. Sure. To, to get more stock in order to have more voting control or... The more likely th thing that they might vote for is class B shares. You don't need to give him more stock. You just change that his voting control increases. We'll see how that goes. And then third option, pay him like everyone else. Okay. Uh, yep. That is what it I was. Mean, I, I, yeah. If, if this was presented to the shareholders for a vote, it would receive a big fat goose egg worth of support. Like, you know, maybe he'd get 10%, maybe. And 70% of us would still vote. Let's pay Elon the way that we structured the compensation package from 2018 because it was good for us then and it's good for us now. Yeah, it's like as if Tesla is the same as other companies, which it's not, right? It's like a trillion dollar company that has a potential for five of the largest market TAMs out there it's leading in each of these AI, robots, autonomous driving, electric vehicles, energy, and uh, it's about to go ballistic. And then you've got the best CEO out there and you want to pay him, what, $100 million? Um, mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So, okay. All right. That's <laughs> so I was a little frustrating because I just wish they would actually tell the truth. But that's, uh, that's part and parcel. That's what we're doing, what we're doing. So... Elon is not only getting paid zero dollars to run Tesla at this point, and they're going to figure this out, and hopefully that's what the new shareholder meeting will resolve. Um, but the second thing is he's been hitting like massive goals. He's got big, giant plans for the world, for Tesla, for his other companies. And so here's you know, a note by Adam Jonas. Morgan Stanley's been producing a lot of reports recently about human and robots. And then they just had a new note and they predicted that the physical work conducted by 1 billion human and robots, 
not part of training, may require 4,000 terawatt hours of incremental annual electricity demand, roughly equal to one full U.S. electric grid. So they're estimating that if you have a billion robots out there, not necessarily all Teslas, they will need to be charged, and that's going to require 4,000 terawatt hours. Um, Elon says that's actually way more than that. So, you know, you know he's already in his head figure out. That's where you heard him say, I need to figure out how to get one terawatt hours of compute. Uh, but, you know, part of that is terawatt hours of electricity to provide, provide this. Yeah, I mean, the... Adam's numbers don't even begin to pass the sniff test when you just think about it logically. Like the number of robots he's talking about is three times the population of the United States. And robots are not anywhere near as electric, you know, as efficient electrically as humans are. And so you're you're taking way more robots that use way more energy to do the same work that a human would do. Of course, that's going to consume a heck of a lot more electricity than we consume today. I mean, there is some, you know, differences in the fact that we do use a lot of electricity for a lot of industrial use cases that, you know, all the electricity that's being used by the United States is not just what humans, you know, need to do work, but still the, you know, the sanity check doesn't necessarily play out. And I think, you know, a billion robots, that is a lot of robots. We're well, you know, at the point that we reach that number, we are well on the way to having just a radically different world and economy than the one that we have today. And to think that you can get there with just the amount of electricity that we already produce, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very skeptical. But that said, it does show that we have got to start investing a lot more into electricity generation than we have been. 